revelation. Touch our hearts, touch our minds to learn more about you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. Can you all hear me okay? Did I break up at all? No, you fine. No. I heard okay. perfectly. All right, good. All right. So last week we talked about Revelation chapter one and we got into the uh, first church uh, in chapter two, which anybody remember what the church is? Ephesus. Yep, church of Ephesus, the church of Ephesus. Okay. So what we're going to do is I'm going through a recap real quick of what we talked about. All right. And a few things to keep in mind as we go through the book of Revelation. One, uh, we're going to take passages as they are, apply common sense when it makes sense. We're not going to try to come up with some kind of whimsical idea about what it may say, okay? okay? Next thing is we will look backward for a meaning, meaning we will search the previous books to try to understand the imagery, unless it states it in the chapter. And in some occasions, or in some cases, it may be down the road in the book where we may translate it or it may found it translated. But more often than not, we will find it in the same passage. Third thing, what we don't know, we don't know. We're not going to try to overanalyze, over uh, exaggerate, whatever it, whatever else it may be. Okay, we're going to take it for what it is, and if we don't know, like I said, we don't know. Okay. Okay. And the last thing we're going to remember and keep in mind is that the Jews were God's chosen people, and they have an understanding that they are privileged to. It's kind of like uh, the kids in my house or anybody that has or in your house or that you grew up in you have special rights and privileges in your own house right my kids have special rights and privileges in my house when the guest comes over they may have rights and privileges but they don't have the same rights and privileges or even the same disciplinary actions as my kids do so let's keep that in mind as we go through the book of revelation okay uh, Revelation, what does Revelation mean? Does anybody remember what the what Revelation means? Revealing Christ. Reveal. Revealing, yes, revealing. And in this case, it is a unveiling or uncovering of who Christ is, right? And yes. so what does apocalypse mean? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry? Mm -hmm. Can you say it one more time? Uncovering, unveiling. Yes. Yeah, so apocalypse, revelation, uncovering, unveiling, they all mean the same thing. It's not the doomsday thing that we have been so accustomed to. Amen. Okay. Amen. Right. Revelation is also the book of blessing. Revelations 1 and 3 says, blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy and blessed are those who hear it and take to hear what is written because the time is near. And this is the NIV version, right? And we also stated that Jesus appears to John and when he appears to John, he, he's very old, he's very old, but yet he's victorious as well. He's victorious. And John is told to write three things. What are the three things that John is told to write about? Um, Anybody remember the three things that John was told to write about? I don't think I, oh, I thought I wrote that down. <laughs> <laughs> All right, verse 11. <laughs> no, hold on. It is. It's actually verse 18. Verse oh, 18 of chapter 1. What three things is he told to write about? Okay, let me see. In 18? Um, yes, yeah. verse 18. Um, chapter one or two? Chapter one. I'm alive. Um, I live it. He wrote. I'm sorry, it's verse 19. My font is so small. I'm sorry, it's verse 19. My font is small. <laughs> okay. It's verse 19. <laughs> oh, oh. Those things that were last seen, and those things which are, and those things which shall be hereafter. That's correct. I wrote down the seven. I wrote down the seven stars. About that was that. It? Oh, that went into twenty. Okay. 
those things. No, he was told to specifically write three, these three things down. Not who to write to. What three things was he told to write about? Or what three things was he told to write? What he saw, oh, 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 what he okay. sees, what he will see. What you've seen, what you, those that are, and those that are to take place. Yes, those yeah, are the three right. things that he was supposed to write about. All right. And then he's told to write these things to the seven churches of Asia. Those are the, he's supposed to write all these things to the seven churches of Asia. And as we know that Revelation is a very, 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 very visual book. And one, um, one person said, picture it like this. Um, so John is in this vision or in this room. And in this room, all these things are going on at one time. So picture yourself in like a, uh, like a, a 3D movie theater. You got something going on to the right. You got something on going in front of you. You got something on going to the left of you. So all these different visions that are coming up. And he's trying to capture all of these things happening at the same time. Okay? I mean, that's pretty uh, intense when you think about it, especially stuff that you've never seen before. You've never seen before. And you're trying to capture it and portray it in words and, and accurately so that people after you can understand exactly what it is. So we recall that John was where when this was written? On the island of Patmos. On the in island. exile. Yes, in exile, yes. So it's a rock quarry island on the island of Patmos outside of Turkey. And the first things that Jesus tells him to write are about seven spirits, seven lampstands, and set, or those are the three things that he actually sees, the seven spirits, seven lampstands, and the seven stars. What do we say is a reference of the seven spirits? Where can we find that reference at? Yeah, what verse is that? Roll down 20. Isaiah 11 and 20. Uh, Isaiah 11 and 2. Oh, another book. Okay. Isaiah 11 and 2 is the reference of the seven spirits. So if we go to Isaiah 11 and 2, it says the spirit of the Lord, which is the first one, rests on him, a spirit of wisdom and understanding, a spirit of counsel and strength, a spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. So when we see the seven spirits, that's what it's referring to. Okay. All right. The seven lampstands. What does the seven lampstands refer to? Churches. The seven churches. Correct. And the seven stars. What are the seven stars or messengers? Angels. Pastors or elders. Okay. Roll down angels. Yep. Okay. Angels, pastors, elders. They're all running the same in this reference. Okay. Now, as we get into chapter two, we got these seven churches and seven churches, as we said, they go kind of clockwise in on the uh, on the on Turkey. Okay. In the Middle East. And I'm sorry. So as it goes clockwise, we go from Ephesus is the first church. And then we go from Ephesus all the way around to Laodicea, which is the last church. Now, what some people say, and I, again, this is something that God has revealed per se over time, is that not only do these things pertain to certain churches, but they also pertain to the era of the churches, which means we are in like the church age. And a good way to think about it is, has anybody seen a sundial? Yes. yes. Right. Yes. Well, sometimes a flat disc, right? With a they call it a novel or something like that on the top of it, a wedge on top of it. And as the sun rises, it goes over the the, the shade tells you about what time it is, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So a good way to think of this is like a sundial, right? Or in Asia, where these churches are lined up, because remember we said if you put your hand, your right hand up, and then you start over on the left hand side of your finger and you go around, right? That's how the churches are arranged. So it was also a messenger route, or you can think of the sundial, is the same way, all right? So the first church that we look at is the church of Ephesus. And they, these letters that was written were all relevant or are relevant to the church of today as well. 
but there's several, several areas of focus that is particularly given to each church. And we're going to go through those. So, for instance, for Ephesus in chapter 2, they were known for their hard work and perseverance. They did not tolerate wicked men who claimed to be apostles but were not. They hated the Nicolaitans. And the thing that they forgot to do or started to do was they forsook the first love. All right. And that's all found in the first few verses of Revelation chapter 2. So when I started to look into this, the one thing that stood out to me that I didn't know anything about, of course, is who the Nicolaitans were. And we find in Acts, if we go to Acts, in Acts, there is a particular passage that, tell, that may give us some insight as to who or where the Nicolaitans came from. So let's go to Acts chapter 6. And verse five. I don't, I don't have, uh... Okay. And it says, this proposal pleased the whole company. So they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit, and Philip, Procurus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenius, and Nicolaus, a convert from Antioch. So I'm always in a wash. I'm sorry, your clothes are in the washer? Mm -hmm. You got your phone on. <laughs> We're glad that you hey, washed your clothes. We appreciate that. <laughs> hey, hey, Claire. Yes, sir. Uh, when I come to church Sunday, can you give me uh, the, the paper that you gave them that has the map and stuff on? We don't you have know? a map. Do we have a map? I, I, no. We don't have a map, James. You just want the papers. I can get you the papers, okay? I can get you okay, the papers. Okay, thank you. All right. So it says that Nicolaus, a convert from Antioch. So it's believed that this person, Nicolaus, is the Nicolaitans. And it's, the Bible calls him out, and it also calls him out somewhere else in, the, in Acts, because he was a, or had pagan background, per se. And his teachings, Paul and him talk about later on, was one of grace and believing that everybody was saved by grace and you can continue to go through your actions and, and be a sinner because you're saved by grace. And regardless of what you did, because you were saved by grace, all right, God would still have mercy on you and you would still be able to get to heaven because you could do whatever you want to and you're saved and covered by grace. And Jesus was like, that's, that's why the word says, I hate the Nicolaitans, because that's not the correct teaching of the Bible. That's not what Jesus was saying to do. Because faith without what is dead? Works. 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 Correct. So what they, were, what they were saying was, you can have all the faith in the world, but you ain't got to act, act upon it, which is totally not right, which is what we see in some Christians today, is that they believe that we can go ahead and do what we want to say, do what we want to do, be where we want to be, and still get to heaven. And that's not sowing good seed. And that's what the Nicol that's who the Nicolaitans were. And that's why we are seeing that Jesus called them out particularly. Not just one time, he called them out again. And that that reminds me of, of a teaching that I know of today. That I, I used to read a book called The Book of Inclusion. And um, and it was it had that kind of premise in it, that ha has that kind of belief in it, that, that, that everybody is saved and everybody will, will go to heaven and, uh, and now I know where it's come from. Yeah. So Paul talked about this a few more times in Acts, and there's a big discussion about it in a few, a few chapters. A few chapters later, if you read Acts, you'll see where they're talking about what your belief system should be. And it's referring to the fact that this kind of branch of Christianity was starting to emerge. And this is what Jesus is saying that, hey, I don't like that. And when you break down the word Nicolaitan, Nico means to conquer, and laity is the members of the church. So to conquer the members of the church. That's what Nicolaitan means. Con Nico is, is to conquer, laity or laitans 
is the lay members of the church, okay? And what they also started to do was they started to put a pillar, per se, between man and God. And that pillar that they started to create was themselves, creating a layer of man going to man and man being that intercessor to God. Mm. Okay. And so as we see this here, they tested the false prophets, which they were really good at doing because they started to learn, discern who was of the Lord and who was not of the Lord. And we're seeing that in this particular era. Now, it's believed that this era was from 33 AD to 100 AD, okay? The death of the last apostle ended this. So when Jesus was resurrected up to the death of the last apostle was how long this period was believed to last. And I will show you guys a table real quick that kind of gives you a time frame as to what we are looking at when we go through these seven churches. Now, of course, these, these dates may vary, but some of the key people in them is what particularly matters, right? So you got Ephesus in the first one, Smyrna, Pergamos, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. So you can see from the time frame from when Jesus was around, or I should say when Jesus ascended, all the way to now is the, is the current timetable or potential timetables of when. Now, again, we're looking at a sundial, and if we're looking at a sundial, we can make reason to believe that as these churches came about, we're, and we see throughout history, that these were rebuilt. All right, so that's Ephesus. Any questions about Ephesus? You said you said the reference scripture is Acts chapter six, what? Verse five. five. Uh verse five. Verse five, okay. Now between six Acts six and five and all the way through chapter 15, you will see the discussion about this the cementing of the true Christian faith. That's where you see. Paul and Peter, Paul and the, the, the disciples have a lot of discussion about what should actually be believed in. Okay. All right. So the next church we get into is the Church of Smyrna, which roughly goes from 100 A.D. to about 300 and some odd A.D. And in that time span, Smyrna. Pauline Pistols, of course, erect. And the remainder of the, the direct bloodline of the apostles start to fade off. And in this age here, or in this church here, John, or Jesus calls out this. They withstood poverty and afflictions. They withstood slander from those who claimed to be Jews, Jesus. but were a synagogue of Satan. And they were forced to suffer. And there's really nothing bad that he calls out against them. Right? So... That leads us to believe that this particular church, to some degree, had a lot of good things going on for them, right? And in the church, Christians were persecuted severely, and the thing that um, was called out about them was that their belief system was strong. All right, so if we go to Revelation, we're in chapter three, and I'm sorry, chapter two. And he says, I know your affliction and your poverty, but you are rich. I know the slander of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue saying, don't be afraid of what you're about to suffer. Look, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison to test you, and you will experience affliction for 10 days. Be faithful to the point of death, and I will give you the crown of life. So they had a very, 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 very strong faith system, very strong belief. And in this particular era in time, as we can see up until like 300, that was when a lot of Christians was burned at the stake, uh, thrown in dens. I mean, it was an extreme time of persecution for the Christians. So their faith had to be strong, had to be strong to maintain and withstand all the things that they were going through. I know I'm going through these pretty quick because we got a lot of, of scriptures to get through. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of church to get through, and we only got about 30 more minutes, okay? Okay. 
All right. Hey, Claire, what, 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 yes, sir. Claire, what, what, what time frame that was for the ch Church of Smyrna? Roughly between 100 and 300 AD. One, 100. And I'm just giving you rough estimates. Okay. And 300 AD. Okay. Estimate. Okay. Gotcha. All right. And now, similar to what we saw or what I didn't cover this time, but what did, what Jesus did say is what? Let anyone who has ears to hear listen to what the Spirit says to the churches. All right? That's something that we will see repeatedly, repeatedly. Amen. So that's something that Jesus stands out or calls out is that regardless of what age you're in or what kind of church, quote unquote, you fit into, you can always be saved. Amen? Amen. You can always Amen. be saved. All right, now we get to the church of Pergamum, the church of Pergamum, okay? They held true to Jesus' name even when one member was put to death. Now, this church here, there's a few things that God calls out about them, <laughs> all right? <laughs> this one has quite a bit that we see more than any other church, and Jesus is like, man, y'all, 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 I don't know if y'all some knuckleheads or what, I'm, just, but listen to this. OK, but I have a few things against you. He says, I have a few, not one, a few things against you. OK. You have some there who hold to the teaching of Balaam, who taught Balak to place a stumbling block in front of the Israelites. That's one thing to eat meat, sacrifice to idols. That's another thing. Commit sexual adultery. And that's another thing. So if we look back at the story of Balaam, does anybody know where the story of Balaam is? Balaam and Balak? I okay. That, that's uh that's when the uh, the uh the uh, the prophet the uh one of them wants wants to uh tell the prophet to go curse Israel. Yes. Talking about that story. Yeah. Yes. All right. So I know the kids are familiar with the story of the talking donkey. Right. The talking donkey, and it's the same prophet. It's the same prophet that had the talking donkey. So mm -hmm. Balaam was playing both sides of the fence he was a messenger of God but he used what God gave him for evil and he ended up tricking the Israelites to following or worshiping idols right now this is what the church of Pergamum is accused of doing now this time frame for the church of Pergamum y'all tell me y'all tell me if this sounds familiar to you guys is about 325 AD to about 600 AD is what some people say. And then in another one, let me bring this one out here. The time frame is believed to be from about 300 AD to about 1000 AD. So what time frame does that sound like? Getting close to the Middle Ages, right? Uh -huh. Getting close to the Middle Ages. So, so we start to see the start of the Catholic Church and other churches that start to put or solidify the worshiping of uh, saints, the focusing on the sacraments such as uh, the communion or baptism and starting to idolize or making those a major emphasis more so than coming to Christ or believing that those are required before you get to Christ in order for you to be saved. And if you don't practice those, you risk going to hell. Didn't That's you also have to um, pay a certain amount of money before you could get to Christ? Uh, yeah, penance. Yes. Penance. Yes. Yeah, that's when we start to see this, but the next age is where we start to see that more so. But in this particular age, that's when it starts to evolve. And that's when, that's why Jesus calls them out and saying, hey, listen, you're going back to what Balaam <laughs> was doing with Balak, right? That's the start of worshiping idols and that mindset of putting an idol in replace of God. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing that um, is called out in the Old Testament is how much God detests idols. And a good way to think about it is this. 
So if we were created in the image of God, and we create something else in our image, so we are demeaning the image of God by creating something else which God created us through or with. Does that make any sense? Sounds kind of confused, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Oh, it sounds good. <laughs> so God created us in his image, and now we are mitigating the uh, value that we have in God's eyes by creating something else that we want to worship or we want to replace in the sight of God. Or in that was a good way God. to put it, Quill. I'm sorry? That was a good way to put it. Thank you. So when we start to create or start to put money, cars, clothing, housing, people, whatever else in front of God, we are then saying to God, you know what? I appreciate you, but I don't appreciate you. I appreciate this thing here more so than you. That's why it is such a disgrace to God when we start to worship other things. And that makes him even more jealous. I mean, think about it in your relationship. You don't want your spouse looking at somebody else. Somebody, I heard somebody the other day put it like this. It's like telling your wife, you know what, listen, I'm going to divorce you. Or telling your husband, you know what, I'm going to divorce you while I go ahead and have an intermarital relationship with somebody else and you sit there and watch. That doesn't make any sense at all. Any sense at all. I feel like the pastor said that on Sunday. I'm sorry? Pastor, didn't you say that on Sunday? You're on mute. Pastor, you're on mute. I, I don't remember what in what context if I said it. I don't remember. It's all good. <laughs> but I... <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> all right. So the next church we see is Thyatira. Thyatira. Now, the church of Thyatira, which we see in chapter 2, verses 18 through 29. Uh, 29, all right, chapter 2, verse 18 through 29, is a church that's known for their love, faith, service, and perseverance. Now, the bad thing about them is that they tolerated false prophetess, but, and was resembled Jezebel, and here we actually see them start to take on what they started to do in Pergamum, they're actually executing it, and to great extent, over in Thyatira. Uh, eating the food, sacrifice to idols, sexual immorality, things of that nature, right? Mm -hmm. And this time frame is from 600 to 1500. These are the dark ages, roughly 600 to 1500, the dark ages. And this is where we really see the penance start to come up and this explodes. We saw the beginning of it in Pergamum, but in this era here, it explodes, right? And this is where uh, Christianity expands, but it's expanding under the notion that, like, like Marie said, you got to have penance. Um, you got to do something to get something. And, and essentially what it is, you got to do something to get something, which is kind of what Jezebel was like. You do something for me, I'll take care of you. All right. You worship me, I'll take care of you. Okay. So this is when they start to blend in the pagan festivals and rituals. And we see that a lot in this church here. And we start, we saw some of that uh, uh, come to an end per se in the next church, right? Mm -hmm. Quill, would this be the time that they started um, bringing in things like Easter? Um, well, that's the one I'm thinking of. I, I guess Christmas would be another one, but but yeah, well, Easter with the goddess Esther that yeah, they so, brought so into Pergamum, the Pergamum introduced it, but Thyatira would be the church that actually takes it and runs with it per se. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's when they like they create a standard, and then in this age here, it's also believed in this age. That's when they uh, the Pope starts to claim that he is what is infallible. I believe that's what they call it. The, uh -huh. the infallibility of the papal seat 
that tends yeah. to come around somewhere in this age. Okay. So that would be the age when the um, Protestants came about Not as quite they rebelled yet. against the Catholic Church. Not quite yet. It was so wicked. Not quite yet. We're not quite there yet. Yes, sir. It was more when the when the age of uh, what, what do you call those those theoretical mystical uh, things they were about, like Z Zeus and all those guys. They were about in the age of uh, Pergamos. Pergamos. In fact, Pergamos, Pergamos had. Um, an altar there that they call the seat of Satan or Satan's seat. Okay. I didn't know that. <laughs> well, that's why I was wondering where was his, uh, said that the one we just did uh -huh. was in the city where Satan had his throne. That was, right. that was Satan's seat. That's what that they call it. Smyrna. Yeah. That was in Smyrna. Synagogue of Satan, is that what you're referring to, Willie? Uh, no, I'm talking about a throne that they had there. Oh, the throne they call the throne Satan's seat. And that's in Pergamum? Yeah. That's what the Bible said. It just said it. Where you... Oh, read King James Bible this time instead of the. <laughs> Where are you at, Mary? What verse, Mary? Uh, let me go back to it. Uh... Oh, the so-called secrets of Satan. Oh, verse, sure. verse 13. Yeah, 13. Yeah. Verse 13 says it. Yeah, well, oh, yeah. Satan's Satan's throne is, yeah, Pergamum. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thus says the one who has a sharp double-edged sword. I know where you live, where Satan's throne is. And that's where you're saying that's where the, the seat of Satan is. That that's yeah, Satan's Satan. throne was his, yeah, it was the seat of Satan, and that's where Zeus and all the other god, false gods and stuff started at. In mythology. Mythology, thank you. Well, that's that's called polytheism, the belief yeah. in many gods. Yeah, I was trying to think of that mythology thing, but that's when yeah. mythology started. So y'all, we went back at church. We were talking about thought theory. Y'all went back to church. I'm, I'm sorry. It, it's just that that one was so interesting. <laughs> I'm like, what are y'all talking about? We're not even there yet. <laughs> oh, wow. Yes, yes. 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 It, it started there and it went forward. It was carried exactly. forward from there. Yeah. So, I'm like, that's not I'm a sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Will I'll, I'll take right. it. Yeah, I did it. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Because I'm like, oh man. Okay. But if you ever want to know where Hercules right, so come we're, from we're and all those guys, that's where he come from. <laughs> yeah, so that's what I said. In Pergamum, yes, that's when we had the start of the uh, Greek mythology, yeah. Roman mythology, and that started to blend in tremendously with the church, and that's also the start of the papal seat as well, and we start to see right. it even being more pronounced in the Dark Ages, where we start to see that the uh, sacraments become more of a requirement than it is a uh, a privilege or a testament to Christ. Right. All right. And we were inside Tira. Yeah. All right. So now, can we stay on Thyatira? Tira? Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. We can try. <laughs> <laughs> so you right. had a little a little deviation, you know that kind of. <laughs> Yeah, you were okay. just seeing if we were All paying right. attention, weren't you? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> okay. So now, in Thyatira, like I said, that's the Dark Ages. We see the penance. And then this is also, like he said, with Jezebel and the sexual immorality. This becomes very, very, very pronounced in this particular age. Okay? Um, so... I was going to... Uh, we'll, we'll come to that later on. I'll talk about later on, Okay? So in verse 20, 2 and 20 says, but I have this against you. You tolerate the woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess and teaches and deceives my servants to commit sexual immorality and to eat meat sacrificed to idols. I gave her time to repent, but she does not want to repent of her sexual immorality. Look, I will throw her into a sick bed and those who commit adultery with her into great affliction unless they repent of their works. So what happened, what was a major 
uh, thing that happened in the dark ages or the black ages, can anybody think of, that happened in Europe that killed roughly a third of Europe? The plague. plague. I'm sorry? The plague. Yeah, the plague. plague. The plague, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. I'll throw her into a sick bed and those who commit adultery with her into great affliction. I will strike her children dead. Then all the churches will know that I am the one who examines minds and hearts and I will teach and I will give to each of you according to your works. All right. And then we see that it comes to verse 29, that anyone who has ears to hear, Adam. listen to what the spirit says to the churches. Amen. All right. Now we come to chapter three, chapter three. First church we see here is Sardis. First church here we see is Sardis. And we see that there's some that are worthy. Thus says the one who's, this is chapter, uh, verse one, right to the angel of the church in Sardis. Thus says the one who has the seven spirits of God, which we already know who that is, and the seven stars, which we know what that is. I know your works. You have a reputation for being alive, but you are dead. Now, this error here is from 1517 to 1730, roughly. So 1500 to 1700, roughly 1500 to 1700. So we know that you have a reputation for being alive, but you are dead. And this age here is what Mary was kind of alluding to. In 1517, what happened in 1517? Does anybody know? Does the name Martin Luther ring a bell to anybody? Yeah. yeah. So what did Martin Luther do? Protestant, the Reformation, when he um, put the thesis on the um, door of the church. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that was a awakening. Okay, this is one Protestant, Protestantism, however you want to say it. Protestant. <laughs> yes, the Protestant Reformation. Protestant. There we go. I'll, I'll go that route. The Protestant Reformation. Okay, <laughs> began. So essentially, Martin Luther had been studying because the Bible was printed in 14. 50 or somewhere around there. That's when the, the Gutenberg press was, was invented. And so the Bible starting to be printed. And now people can read it instead of having it read to them. And he's starting to study it. And he's like, what in the world? Why aren't we giving this to people? So he says to the Catholic Church and the Church of England, like, God, I, you guys are teaching this stuff, but I got 95 problems. <laughs> <laughs> and so he takes it and he nails it to the door. And so from that point on, they say it's the Protestant Reformation. That's when that began. And so that's why we, we have the scripture that says, you have a reputation for being alive, but you are dead. So he was calling them out on it. So this is when we see the awakening that people are now being able to read and interpret the Bible. All right. Be alert and strengthen what remains, which is about to die. For I have not found your works complete before my God. Remember then what you have received and heard, keep it and repent. He's giving them a chance to repent. So they know, that, like the Catholic Church and these other uh, branches that are similar to the Catholic Church, and I'm using the Catholic Church because that's what we are most familiar with as far as what they believe as far as having an intercessory man, right? This is what this was referring to, those that have an intercessory man, okay? Then what you have heard and repent, if you are not alert, I will come like a thief and you have no idea at what hour I will come upon you. Now, we heard Jesus reference this himself. In fact, I think there's two parables. Oh no, Jesus references and then Paul references it as well, talking about coming quickly, right? Coming like a thief in the night. Mm -hmm. But you have a few people in Sardis who have not defiled their clothes and they will walk with me in white because they are worthy. So even though these branches of Christianity were preaching or making a point of emphasis about you going a certain route, God still said, there's some of you that, that know better. So because you know better, I'm going to spare you. I'm going to keep you. Amen. In the same way who conquers will be, in the same way, the one who conquers will be dressed in white clothes and I will never raise his name from the book of life but will acknowledge his name before my father. Let anyone who has ears to hear, listen to what the spirit says to the churches. Okay. 
And in this era here, that's when we see several denominations that start to break away from the Catholic Church. Several denominations start to break away. Now, the next one we come to is between 1700 and 1900. And this is what we say is the foreign expansion. So now we're seeing churches start to grow in Japan, Asia, uh, North America even. All right. Now, this church, what's the name of this church? Everybody should know it. Philadelphia. It's a friendly church. Philadelphia. I'll say that <laughs> Philadelphia, right? The city of brotherly love. Okay. Now, remember we were talking about this being like a sundial or messenger route. So if we were looking at a sundial or messenger route, we're coming to the, the beginning, right? Or coming to an end, depending on how you look at it. Because we're going around the circle, like your clock, right? So now you're going almost to the beginning again. Because remember, if you look at Turkey, if you had your map up in your hand, looking at Turkey, you're going all the way around. You went through five churches already. You only got two left, okay? So that's why people believe that this is the, we're coming to the end. And this is something that, uh, has been revealed to, uh, uh, I should say, the, the, the opening <coughs> as to what Daniel was prevented from seeing because he didn't know the time. And now we are actually living in the age that we can actually see all of this happening. Amen? Okay. So yeah. people saying that we are living in the last times, it, we can actually see a lot of this stuff. And we can see, I printed off on, I had on one sheet. Uh, actually, if you do, if you look up the Encyclopedia Britannica, and then you go through and like search timeline of technology. And I did this because I was curious myself just to see what it would be like. Research timeline of technology. You will see that in the last 200 years, there are more advancements in technology than ever before in history. Mm -hmm. Than ever before in history. Read that. I mean, the amount of uh, technology that we have is, is, is light years. I mean, yeah, you can go ahead and say, yeah, the Egyptians did this in their time frame and you did this, but the Encyclopedia Britannica had it breaking down to where the first how many years of man, there was maybe an invention or so every 150, 200 years or so. And now here we are in the last 200 years, we have had thousands of inventions come up. That's how close and that's how fast uh, the devil has been working per se. So in the church of Philadelphia, Jesus says to it in verse eight, chapter three, verse eight, I know your works. Look, I have placed before you an open door that no one can close because you have but little power. You have kept the word and have not denied my name. Note this. I will make those from the synagogue of Satan who claim to be Jews and are not, but are lying. I will make them come and bow down at your feet. And they will know that I have loved you because you have kept my command to endure. I will also keep you from the hour of testing that is going to come on the whole world to test those who live on the earth. I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one takes your crown. The one who conquers, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God and he will never go out again. I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the New Jerusalem which comes down out of heaven for my God and my new name. Let anyone who has ears to hear, listen to what the spirit says to the churches. Now we're gonna see verse 12 come up later on in Revelation. We're actually gonna see, and it's, it's, it's pretty awesome as to what happens in verse 12. We'll, we'll see that later on. Uh, I think it's in chapters 20 through 22, somewhere in there we'll see that, okay? But in this age here, this is believed, like I said, between 1700 and 1900. This is the expansion of Christianity to North America, more in Asia, particularly Russia and Japan. So this is the expansionist age of Christianity. And it's all documented. Okay. Uh, now, uh, Quill, I, I mean to interrupt you. What that estimated time frame is again? 1700 to 1900. Okay. Okay, that's why I wanted to know. Yep. So they endured with little strength and kept Jesus' word, not denying his name. Those who claim to be Jews will be forced to bow down and acknowledge Jesus' love for them. And they endure patiently and will be kept from the hour of trial. So Jesus is telling them, hey, I'm coming soon. 
I'm coming soon. All right. And the last church that we get to is Laodicea. Laodicea, which is believed to be from 1900 to now. And this is the Pentecostal Reformation, right? The Holy Rollers came about, <laughs> all right? So you got your Southern Baptist, you got your Kojic, you got your, you, you name it, right? And this is the last part of the last church in Revelation. And it starts in verse 14. But let's go to verse, okay, 15. I know your works that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish that you were cold or hot. Verse 16 says, so because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I am going to vomit you out of my mouth. Verse 17, for you say I'm rich. I've become wealthy and need nothing. And you don't realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. Verse 18, I advise you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so that you may be rich, white clothes so that you may be dressed, and your shameful nakedness not to be exposed, and ointment to spread on your eyes so that you may see. All right? So this church here was known um, or, or is known to think that they know it all, right? And Jesus says, I know your words that you are neither hot nor cold. So this is referring to the fact that there are a lot of people who, or the, the belief is that uh, I can do what I want to do and it'll be okay. I can do this and I can do that. Um, I'll pick and choose what I want, want to believe in. And um, one thing that I, it's kind of like going back to, um, uh, which one was that? Pergamum almost, to where, no, before Pergamum, was it? Smyrna. Smyrna, where I can do what I want to do and say what I want to say, but yet I am, uh, I'm saved by grace. So I can treat people that are You froze up. <laughs> Quill. Melanie froze up, Sanai. Or Nari. Getting good, man. <laughs> <laughs> he totally froze up. <laughs> That's the only uh, thing about being on a computer screen and people see your face freeze up. <laughs> there you go. Oh, no. oh Tanil's on there. It represents a different time frame. Okay. No, he didn't come back. He's he's coming. Hey, y'all, can you can y'all hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. Right, sorry about that. I don't know what happened. <laughs> All right. I have a lot of those moments. <laughs> so I'm talking about I can do what I want to do, say what I want to say, think how I want to think, and everything's gonna be okay. And this is going back to kind of like the Nicolaitans, which were um, incorrect in that belief because they uh, were the ones that was hated by God. So Jesus says, I'll spit you out. I will spit you out because you have an, what is this behind me? I'm sorry, that behind me caught my attention. I don't know what my wife has with her background. What is that background? I don't know. <laughs> it is a distraction. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the father of distractions there? Everybody else is looking at it too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh, that's not American Girl, though. Okay. I'm sorry. I that's don't a, know how to get it off. It's here. fine. It's okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, it's not mine. Because I'm looking at a small picture first, and then I just saw that, so I'm sorry. <laughs> We're listening. Trina, come back up again. But yeah, so it was of the mindset that I can do what I want to do, say what I want to say, and um, I'm still going to get to heaven. And God is like, no, it don't work that way. <laughs> it don't work that way. And we're seeing that a lot of denominations are accepting, or a lot of churches even are accepting pretty much anything and any lifestyle. And that's what God is saying that I'll spit you out because you, you're not hot or cold. You're not saying that you are one way and you're not saying that you're not one way. And we know that again, faith without works is what? Yeah, dead. 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 So that's why we've got to uh, be diligent in 
practicing and living out the word of God because in this day and age where people will accept anything and, and the, God is not like that. God's not like that at all. Mm-hmm. God's not like that at all. All right. So I know that was quick rundown. We went through all seven churches <laughs> in about 50 minutes. Has anybody got any questions or any comments? What time? James asked you all the other ones what the time frame was. What is it on this one? 1900 until Jesus oh, no. returned. Oh, that's the last one. Yep, because this is the current age. This is the current age that we live in. And I think we can all see that right now, too, that we live in an age to where everything is acceptable. Mm-hmm. Everything mm-hmm. is acceptable. And yep. people are in some churches and out. I'm sorry? In some churches and out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I think the one thing when you talk about in some churches and not in the churches should watch it is that some of the leaders who are putting people down for doing things, they're doing behind the scenes. So Amen. I think that's where you gotta be careful too. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're totally right. Like, being like none of us are perfect. There's, every, right. you know, people have some things and it's just so happens to be the things that are visual sins that people can see, but there's a lot of sins going on that others can't see. Yep. Mm-hmm. People have lost their confidence in the church mm-hmm. because of sin. Mm-hmm. You know, you listen to the radio, the TV, and you know, probably at least once every six months, a pastor done did this or that that was well known, and it just makes people think I'm better off on my own. I don't need to be bothered with God. Uh-huh. Well, and I think it, yeah, and I think the other side is we're all human. We live in a flesh. And to put somebody, yes, we do expect more of leaders. Yeah. However, don't have them up on that pedestal as an idol. And that's the part that, that is where we make a lot of errors. Uh, uh, Koya. Yes, sir. I, I see a time frame where um, in later Sea, the, 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 the main thing that God is talking about is the church is is lukewarm. Yep. You know, they're lukewarm. That their, their commitment is not there. And um and that's why he brought up I'd rather have you hot or cold. And um and uh I was sitting here thinking about that. I said, oh he's talking about lukewarm here. I mean <laughs> you straddling the fence. You don't know which way you want to stand. And, mm-hmm. and that's the basis mm-hmm. of the, the church of Laodicea. And I said, okay. That's, I, I, I really appreciate you, uh, Quill. You know, that brings fresh insight of what's going on. All right. Yeah, lukewarm is a lack of passion. Yeah, and a lack of commitment. It's a lack of, it's a lack of passion and a lack of commitment. Mm-hmm. See, uh, those who has a hundred and ten percent com- commitment are are the hot one. So those who have zero commitment are are the, z- are the low one, the cold one. But there are people, and I I've, I've seen this out here myself, out of my own eyes, and experience it out of my own life. They're lukewarm. They don't. Their commitment that is not that they don't know they're undecided which which way they want to go. They want to go all the way with God or they want to go all the way with the world. Mm. Yeah. And this is what Jesus is talking about here. I think, and the biggest thing though, I think a lot of people want to go all the way. Like I said, we're in a flesh. So as soon as something happens, it's like immediately saying, Oh, why did I have that attitude? Forgive me, Lord. So what are we doing? Are we keeping this attitude all day and being mean and nobody sees that? And then people see other things and think it's like we're human. Nobody's going to be perfect. Yeah. And that's what messes up a lot of people is, is, you know, thinking you have to be, even people won't turn to Christianity because they think they have to be perfect first. Yeah. Mm. yeah. That's a double standard, a double mindset. 
that we have that you need to do something and I need to see you do it and I'm gonna hold you to it, but don't hold me to it. Mm -hmm. Right, right, mm -hmm. right. And, and it's almost like putting that person as a God. Yes. Mm -hmm. and we have to be careful right. that, that we don't, we keep human beings human. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I think careful with children, because I remember, I mean, even growing up, I think I used to think that of our pastor in a Baptist church. I mean, I used to think, oh, he's all this. He's, you know, you look at them, you're hearing the word. And that's he's what holy. you think. Huh? Yeah. What'd you say? He's holy. Mm -hmm. Right, right. <laughs> Now the adults know different, but I did it as children. You don't. <laughs> well, this is good. Stay encouraged, and and, and the fun part is starting to happen. <laughs> All right. So I guess the main thing that we need to keep in mind is that as we look at these churches, uh, we all fall into one of these churches in some way, shape, form, or fashion, regardless of what church that we fall into as far as our spirituality is concerned, God always calls us back and says, hey, I'm here for you, all right? Just come back to me. And that's something that we got to keep in mind. And that's something that we need to communicate to other people. Like, we're all going to have our, like we just said, we're all fallible, mm -hmm. every single one of us. We're not like mm -hmm. the, the, the Pope where he's infallible or believed to be infallible. No, no, we're not. We're not. Yeah, we have the understanding that everybody will make mistakes Mm -hmm. and that allows us to understand and cope with people better and we don't have to worry about um people being uh misled or being depressed because so-and-so did whatever we mm -hmm. have the understanding and we can work in love and building them back up and getting them to where god wants them to be at mm -hmm. that's good right all right and now all right so I have a few things for you guys, if you all would like. Um, I went through one of the references that I have and broke down. Uh, it is a verse by verse <laughs> um, rev reference of every single reference in the book of Revelation possible. I should say every single one possible. All right. So the Christian Standard Bible, I'm going to show this to you guys. Y'all see this right here? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, if y'all can see that. Mm -hmm. This is chapter one. Oh, okay. Y'all see all that? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So I have 22 chapters of references that's verse by verse. Wow. Okay. So I went through and I put it all in formatted it for you guys. So instead of it being 300 and some odd pages, I shrunk it down to where it's all 22 pages for you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I'll have that in print um, so that, that that way you can add to it as you do your studies, because some of the, like the Isaiah reference isn't on here. Isaiah 11 and two that we talked about. Actually, I added that on here uh, from Revelations one and four. When you talk about the cloud of witnesses, no, I'm sorry, the spirits of God. That's on here. 11 and two. Yeah, the spirits of God. Um, but then the one we talked about in Hebrews is not mentioned on here. So talking about the clouds. That's not mentioned on here, but so you can add to these, of course, because this is not an all inclusive list. It's an expansive list, <laughs> but it's not all inclusive. Mm -hmm. And Willie, it's in big enough font for you to read, too. All right. Hey, Quill, I got one. I got one quick question. I, I didn't, I didn't uh, understand what, what, is, what they mean about the spirit of God's like the seven spirit of God, what's that represent? Okay, uh, Isaiah 11 and two. Uh-huh. Okay, go read Isaiah 11 and two and it breaks down the seven spirits of God. Okay, seven spirits of God, okay. Isaiah uh, 11 yeah. and two, okay, gotcha. You want us to read it now? No, 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 no. That's for him to reference. <laughs> yeah. Well, we all want that since he got it. <laughs> you already have that. You have it in your notes. Oh, I already got it. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I failed to write it down last week. I was so scared. That's oh, okay. <laughs> I, asked, I asked for it. Yeah, it's also referenced. It's also referenced in. Uh, in some of the churches too. He holds the seven right. lampstands and the seven spirits I of God. I sure do. I see it in my notes. All right. And the seven stars. 
<laughs> All right. So now um, we will do, uh, do offering. Are you emailing that out? Is that what you're telling us? Or how do you want us to get it yeah. from you? Yeah, no, I can email it out. I'll also have yeah. copies, but I'll send it out to everybody that's in the um, the Bible study group. And okay. I can put, I'll look at the video and pull up everybody's names that's on here. And, um, and that please way I can don't forget me. I, I, I got I those copies, Joyce. <laughs> I, 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 well, I haven't got the first, I haven't got the first note. I okay. haven't either. All right, so can you write these names down? All right, we'll get your, we'll pull your mailing addresses up and we'll mail them to you. Who doesn't have an email that's on here now? I don't. Who do I don't. I don't have it either. Uh -huh. Say your names. I uh -huh. That was Inez. I don't know if uh, I have an email. And Joyce. Address. Yes, ma'am. And Joyce, Joyce Evans and Joyce oh, Salser. Yes. So three yeah, people. Quill. got my address and everything, Quill. Right, they've got it. Yeah, but it was supposed to be dropped off to you. So, but then Lieutenant got in an accident, so we gotta find other arrangements. And I, I didn't even think about that, so I apologize about that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but I, the next day I gave it to Tanil, and she got the she got my address. Yeah. Shavonda got my address. Okay. No, <laughs> longer, <laughs> so we got Joyce Evans, Joyce Salter, and Inez. Yes. Anybody else? Inez, what is your phone number if you don't mind giving it to us so that we can call you and get your address? Oh, you have my address. Okay, we got it. So I can put yeah, it you, you, you mail me things all the time over the years. Okay. No, Inez, he's talking about him personally. Oh. No, but if it's in Fellowship it 1, if it's in Fellowship 1, it's okay. He'll get it from Siobhan. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right, so yeah, because I was kind of lost tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of lost. I was trying to keep up. I'm like, wait a minute, where did he at? <laughs> I'll, I'll get that 22 page of reference when I come to church Sunday. <laughs> well, I ain't gonna be there. I don't have I don't have a way to the library to print this out. Hmm. I hope before this is over with, I can understand. Oh, you will. You will. You will. I'm still waiting. <laughs> okay. You'll understand it. Uh huh. Oh, yeah. Did he give us a homework assignment for next week? All right. No, I'm right here. I'm back now. It came back up again, finally. So I apologize about that. So next week, it's going to be kind of rushed again, or we're going to have a lot to cover because we're going to go over chapters four and five, which is the throne of God. Chapters four and five. Okay. The throne of God. All right. And then yes. I- Chapter four will... and five of Revelation? Yes, ma'am. It does okay. help if you read it ahead of time. Mm-hmm. Revelation chapter four and five. All right. Mm -hmm. Thanks. All right. So now we're going to do offering. Um, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Willie. That, that's me. I was just. Uh, go, go ahead, Willie. I'm sorry. I didn't hear you. I was going to say, yes, ma'am. That, that's the purpose of homework is you read it at home. That's right. You do the work that goes with it. Right. Mm -hmm. That's all. I'm sorry. <laughs> and I, I just want to say, where, uh, yeah. Oh. I, I, I'll get that 22 uh, page of reference from you uh, Sunday because I don't have a way to uh, to the library to print this out. Okay, that's not a problem. That's not a problem. I have copies in, um, and I also email it out. So if you want to come to the church and pick it up on Sunday, that's fine too. So we'll make sure that everybody who wants a copy gets a copy. Okay, thank you. All right. So now if you want to give, of course, you can go to the website and it's wordoffaithindy.org. Click on the Give Now, Worship Through Giving. You can also text to give, text D-I-V-E, all right, uh, to 317-827-7955. Again, it's 317-827-7955.
or you can mail in your check or money order to P.O. Box 26734. That's P.O. Box 26734, Indianapolis, Indiana, 46226. All right. And does anybody have any prayer requests? 